Good to see you all back again. Well, today's got to be interesting, at least for us. This afternoon is Meet the Teacher. Our daughter is starting school next week, so we all go down to meet her preschool teacher this afternoon. And my wife, you know, her life evolves around our daughter. I work, my wife stays at home, takes care of the house, takes care of our daughter, takes care of me, really. And so this is going to be the first time our daughter's really going to be out and gone. So my wife is both you know, excited and kind of filled with a bit of dread. So, well, it should be interesting. We'll see where it goes. In addition to that, the doctors tell me, you know, I'm not supposed to yet, not till next week sometime. I'm probably going to sneak down during lunch today and check on a couple projects I left running at the office before I went in for surgery. Don't tell anybody. I'm not supposed to yet, but well, especially with my medications reduced and having a much clearer head, I'm getting a bit of cabin fever, so I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, I'm bad. Oh well. Let's get down to the news, shall we? Jumping down under, over to, the, over to Australia, turns out the state of Tasmania, yes, Tasmania is a state of the country of Australia, has introduced a proposal to ban the sale of tobacco products and their related paraphernalia, pipes, cigars, cigarettes, etc., etc., to anyone born after the year 2000. Yes, doing your math, that would mean anyone currently about 12 years old or younger. Not legally able to buy it yet. The idea behind this is to create the first Tasmanian smoke-free generation. If you don't know, which I assume most of you don't, unless you're from Australia or possibly Tasmania, because I didn't until doing research, Tasmania has one of the highest per capita population percentages of smokers in the world. It has the highest of any state in Australia. And they're trying to fix that with the obvious thought and philosophy that well, if they grow up without it, and then by the time they're legal to buy it, it's illegal for them to buy it, they'll just never have the temptation and they'll never smoke, creating a smoke-free generation. Uh, I can see the thought pattern behind it. Don't know if I agree with the logic. If they want it, they're going to get it. I mean, they just hop the ferry or the plane over to Australia. It's right there. Tasmania is an island state to an island nation. Kind of interesting. And they can just pick it up on Australia all they want. But we'll also see if it holds up in the Court of Appeals. See if it makes it to the popular vote. Moving on from there, though. Let's go on back to Europe and go to France, shall we? Where it turns out, the current French president, Franco Francozy Hollande, or Holland, it's got a funky spelling to it. I'm not sure how to pr pronounce it has pledged an increase to the tax rate on anyone making more than a million euro a year. Now this really goes well with the French people because in France they get this... I'm an American so I just see it as a, a weird thing with if you start a business, if you're successful and make a lot of money, there's something wrong with you, something suspicious. I don't get it personally. I think success is a great thing. If you can be successful, wonderful. But, his proposal is gaining him both accolades and praise among you, you and I, the common people, that haven't made it rich, and already has a number of French companies, as well as the ultra-rich, looking at getting out of the nation. That's right, moving out. Because the proposed tax increase would take them to a 75, that's right, 75, 75% tax rate on anyone making over 1 million euro a year. Wow! 75%! That would by far rocket France to the lead position in the world, as far as nations go, on taxing their rich or their elite. That like blows them out in front by like I think it's something like 30% higher than the next closest nation. 
The U.S., by the way, currently holds the sixth position in the world, taxing anyone in the same pay range at 35%. That's right, tax 35% to anyone making the equivalent of 1 million euro or more a year. That's not too bad. Now, as I said, this is gaining a lot of accolades among the working class, among the common French people. Yes, you are taxing the rich, wonderful. But with a tiny bit of research, which really is all I did on the side of the subject, I found that he's also looking to make some other reforms next year. Now, for your information, Mr. Holland is the first openly socialist French president since the 1980s. Just a side piece of information. And is having to look at next year, probably hoping to ride this positive fanfare forward with it, at once again increasing France's retirement age as well as their legally allowed hours of work per week. The current Social Security retirement age in France is 60. It's going to you sit back and the government takes care of you. But something a lot of you don't know, as I mentioned earlier, French, France has this thing about being successful and making money and it making you suspicious. Their current legally allowed max work week is 40 hours. Yeah, that's the max, is a 40 hour work week. And it's commonly done in a four day work week. A lot of American businesses consider 40 hours part time. If that's still rattling through your brain doing the what? In 2005, it moved up. It used to be no more than 35 hours a week. And then they complained about their lack of product productivity and our higher gross domestic product and productivity and everything. Well, duh, some of those work 60, 70 hours a week. You've got to hire two people to do the same thing, which means double the medical coverage, and everything else. So, some interesting thoughts for you to think about, because he's going to take some negative hits in the polls as soon as he goes doing that. I'm surprised that he didn't catch on to that quicker. Well, let's move on to some other stuff right quick. Here's a fun and interesting image for you. In case you're wondering what it is, so was I. And it turns out a New Zealand Naval Research Vessel found it, and what it is is a 300 mile long, 30 mile wide, floating island of pumice. If you don't know what pumice is, pumice is a volcanic rock that comes out of the volcano, immediately hitting the water and cooling so fast that volcanic gases get trapped in pockets in the rock, making it buoyant. Apparently the, island is also, the floating island is also so thick Parts of it are floating two feet above sea level. It's kind of interesting. It's suspected to, be, to have been put off by the Monterey Sea Mound, obviously in the Pacific, and is floating with the tide. The sea mound has been very volcanically active lately, and thus is the suspected cul culprit. That's just a little bit of fun news. And something really interesting to think about, 300 miles long and 30 miles wide, sitting in places two feet above the waterline. Some of it's dry. That's, that's kind of cool. All right, gang, I've been long on the gills today. I'm going to leave you with one fun little thought, something that's been kicking me in the head. Why to work and earn a living wage do I need to take a urinalysis test while someone on welfare receiving a free handout from the government does not. I am the Articulate Grunt. I'll catch up with you all later. Leave me any thoughts and comments, otherwise I'm just talking to myself and have no idea what you think of what I cover. If you've got any suggestions, ideas, things you'd like me to take a look at, let me know. I'll catch you next time. Until then, keep your heads down, take care of yourself.